Dear friends, family, and members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, this is Marlene with Building Zion, and um, I'm here today with a video that will be quite a bit shorter than some of my others. I think this one will probably only be about 15, maybe 20 minutes at the most, um, but I wanted to share with you some of the talks that I have given in sacrament lately. And of course, a talk in sacraments is going to be much shorter than some of the videos that will go like for 45 minutes or an hour. And maybe that will be better for some of you to have little bite-sized videos to listen to rather than um, really long, big ones. So this first one comes from this last week's Come Follow Me, actually. It's a DNC 135, The Martyrdom of Joseph Smith. And I titled this one... Joseph the Testator, his testament sealed in blood. So we go right to verse 1, which says, To seal the testimony of this book and the Book of Mormon, we announce the martyrdom of Joseph Smith, the prophet, and Hiram Smith, the patriarch. They were shot in Carthage, Carthage jail on the 27th of June, 1844, about 5 o'clock p.m. by an armed mob. If we go down to the footnotes, martyrdom takes us to Doctrine and Covenants 522, which reads, And that you may be firm in keeping the commandments wherewith I have commanded you. And if you do this, behold, I grant unto you eternal life, even if you should be slain. It also takes us to DNC 630, which reads, And even if they do unto you, even as they have done unto me, blessed are ye, for ye shall dwell with me in glory. So here we can see immediately that because of the promises given to Joseph Smith by Heavenly Father, that if he were to be slain, that he would receive eternal life and dwell with Heavenly Father in glory. Knowing this, we can then go right into verse 3, which reads, Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of the Lord, has done more, save Jesus only, for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that ever lived in it. President Gordon B. Hinckley, in a Liahona, or Ensign Talk, in May 2005, uh, titled The Great Things Which God Hath Revealed, he said, uh, During the brief 38 and one-half years of his life, there came through him an incomparable outpouring of knowledge, gifts, and doctrine. Looked at objectively, there is nothing to compare with it. Subjectively, it is the substance of the personal testimony of millions of Latter-day Saints across the earth. Then President Joseph F. Smith said that, uh, let's see, he explained that the influence of the Prophet Joseph Smith's ministry extends to all people, regardless of when they had lived or will live upon the earth. The work in which Joseph Smith was engaged was not confined to this life alone, but it pertains as well to the life to come and to the life that has been. In other words, it relates to those who have lived upon the earth, to those who are living, and to those who shall come after. It is not something that relates to man only while he tabernacles in the flesh, but to the whole human family, from eternity to eternity. Earlier in a discourse that Joseph Smith gave in Nauvoo on June 18, 1844, he said, I do not regard my own life. I am ready to be offered a sacrifice for this people. For what can our enemies do? Only kill the body? And their power is then at an end. Stand firm, my friends, never flinch. Do not seek to save your lives. For he that is afraid to die for the truth will lose eternal life. Hold out to the end, and we shall be resurrected and become like gods, and reign in celestial kingdoms, principalities, and eternal domains. So then going back to section 135, verse 4, he, Joseph, said, I am going like a lamb to the slaughter, but I, but I am calm as a summer's morning. I have a conscience void of offense toward God and towards all men. I shall die innocent, and it shall yet be said of me, he was murdered in cold blood. Then in verse 5, at the end of verse 5, it says, The testators are now dead, and their testament is in force. 
The footnote for testators takes us to Hebrew 9, verses 16 through 17, which reads, For where is a, for, sorry, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. So if we look at this in comparison to the Old and New Testament, who is the God of the Old and New Testament? Whose testimony did the prophets write in this book, these books? It was that of Jesus Christ. Christ's testament included not only his doctrine and law, but also the crowning event of all mankind, Christ's atoning sacrifice. He then, as the testator, sealed his testimony with his death and crucifixion. And as Hebrews 9.17 states, that Christ's testament is now in force. All who enter into the waters of baptism and take upon them the name of Christ are bound to that testimony. Elder Jeffrey R. Holland of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles said, Later, when actually incarcerated in the jail, Joseph the prophet turned to the guards who held him captive and bore a powerful testimony of the divine authenticity of the Book of Mormon. Shortly thereafter, pistol and ball would take the lives of those two testators. As one of a thousand elements of my own testimony of the divinity of the Book of Mormon, I submit this as yet one more evidence of its truthfulness. In this their greatest and last hour of need, I ask you, would these men blaspheme before God to continue by continuing to fix their lives, their honor, and their own search for eternal salvation on a book, and by implication a church and a ministry, they had fictitiously created out of whole cloth? Tell me whether, in this hour of death, these two men would enter the presence of their eternal judge, quoting from and finding solace in a book, which if not the very word of God, would brand them as impostors and charlatans until the end of time. They would not do that. They were willing to die rather than deny the divine origin and the eternal truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. In a revelation given to President Brigham Young, the Lord confirmed that, it was needful that Joseph Smith should seal his testimony with his blood, that he might be honored and the wicked might be condemned. Elder Robert D. Hales taught, Joseph Smith sealed his testimony with his own blood. The prophet's martyrdom was a voluntary acceptance of death to seal the testimony of the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants, and to bear holy witness to Jesus of Jesus Christ and his gospel in this dispensation. In 2019, January 2019, President Dallin H. Oaks gave a talk titled The Miraculous Mission of the Prophet Joseph Smith. And uh, this talk was in the Liahona. He said, we all know Joseph Smith as the first prophet of this dispensation the Lord's instrument in the Lord's restoration. But what did the Lord restore through this prophet? Or in other words, what testament did Joseph Smith seal when he died? Not all Latter-day Saints and few non-members are aware of the illuminating and massive additions the Lord inspired the prophet Joseph Smith to make to Christian doctrine. Here is a brief list, or in other words, this is Joseph's testament. The nature of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The relative functions of these three members of the Godhead and their relationship to mortal beings. The nature of the fall of man. The purpose of mortal life in furtherance of the Father's plan for his children to attain their eternal destiny. 
the role of the atonement of Jesus Christ in assuring immortality and providing the opportunity for eternal life. The role of earthly and eternal marriage in the Father's plan. The essential role of priesthood and ordinances in the Father's plan. The essential role of temples and proxy ordinances in the Father's plan. The knowledge that God desires to save all of his children and that every person who has lived upon this earth, whether then knowing of Christ or not, is capable of attaining the highest heaven thereafter, hereafter. The relationship of the threefold sources of truth about man and the universe, science, scriptures, and continuing revelation. Anyone who studies even a small part of this list, whether believer or non-believer, must acknowledge that Joseph Smith stands at the headwaters of an, an immense stream of bold and new and precious religious ideas. As we read in Preach My Gospel, the fullness of the gospel was, was restored to the earth through Joseph Smith. You may have noted that my list did not specifically mention Joseph's bringing forth of the Book of Mormon, a new volume of scripture that is, of course, the source of many of those new religious ideas. That book deserves special mention. Its title proclaims its most important function, another testament of Jesus Christ. But beyond that functional role, there is more. The Book of Mormon proposes a new purpose for America, becoming a realm of righteousness rather than an empire of liberty. Against increasing wealth and inequality, the Book of Mormon advocates the cause of the poor. Against Republican government, it proposes righteous rule by judges and kings under God's law. Against a closed canon of Bible and non-miraculous religion, the Book of Mormon stands for ongoing revelation, miracles, and revelation to all nations. Against skepticism, it promotes belief against nationalism, a universal Israel. It foresees disaster for the nation if the love of riches, resistance to revelation, and Gentile civilization prevail over righteousness, revelation, and Israel. More important is just what President Nelson recently said about the Book of Mormon. It is the instrument by which the promised gathering of Israel will be accomplished. Brothers and sisters, this is Joseph Smith's testament that he sealed with his blood. He was a testator of these things, and as he was martyred, his testament is now in force. And now as we take on the responsibility of Christ's testament when we are baptized, so do we as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints take on the responsibility of Joseph's testament. We take on the responsibility to carry on the work of salvation and the restoration in full force until that not-so-distant day when Christ will come again in his glory to reign and rule. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.